this is Level Performance, welcome to a review of a product we engineered. Around here you often see, read and hear the word optimized. And to us that's not just noise. Every performance-altering mod that we produce is backed by tons of data that we analyze. Over time these data accumulate, and recently we've been torturing the Urus and the Audi RS Q8 that's built on the same platform. Incidentally, they're both similar to Porsche's Cayenne, so as soon as a GT comes in, we'll definitely fit an in-house developed intercooler to it. An optimized intercooler with a larger core and quality end tanks, that'll ensure the engine won't be lazy in hot weather. We are currently working on a Lamborghini Urus, and the first thing we did was scan the entire vehicle. We separately scanned the intercoolers, the brackets, and the associated areas. Now there are two main issues with these heat exchangers. The first one is that they're placed very close to the front bumper, making them susceptible to the elements, to rocks, sand, and what have you. Issue number two. With these components being mass-produced, they're made as cheap and simple as possible. For example, the end tanks, or the manifolds if you will, are cast from the factory, while we can opt to print or machine them and so on. Now the first issue can be solved by fitting either protective corrugation to the intercooler itself or mesh to the bumper. But since the bumpers are all different, that'll mean making different mesh inserts, which might get a bit problematic. So we might want to go for the protective corrugation on the intercooler instead. Now cars of this caliber are often modified, receive a tune and so on, which is obviously going to increase the power. That in turn will involve increased airflow, higher pressure and higher temperatures as a consequence. That means we have to make this intercooler more efficient and increase its volume for it to absorb heat more effectively. So we'll get that effect by increasing the volume or by increasing the density of the core or the matrix. So the factory intercooler has a volume of 5.6 liters, and we've developed our own intercooler with 33% more volume. The transparent intercooler on the image, that one is ours, and the purple one is the OEM. So this is how we're going to solve the first issue I mentioned, with it being susceptible to rocks. We'll be fitting protective corrugation to the front and to the rear surface of the intercooler. Those fins are 0.3 millimeters thick, while the primary fins that'll be dissipating the heat while the air is passing through are 0.1 millimeters thick. Now we didn't just order an intercooler core of the right size to fit our product, we also had them make it to our spec. We didn't want the air coming out of it to exceed a certain temperature, throughout the engine's entire operating range and even with minimal airflow through the core. The manufacturer used our specs to determine the internal and external density, and the end product is perfectly tailored to where the intercoolers are supposed to be positioned in the Urus. The end tank is supposed to distribute the incoming air over the core as evenly as possible, in order for it to be properly cooled. And getting the right effect requires a pretty intricate shape. You've got a central wing, that's a baffle that directs the air and is located inside the end tank. And there's also a similar baffle on the lower tank. Now in order to optimize airflow, we had to 3D print the end tanks. Machining them is a lengthy and expensive production process, but we can get the aluminum tanks just the shape we want. They're thin, light, easy to weld, and most importantly, they don't take long to make, allowing us to test our new intercooler without having to wait an entire month. After making the end tanks, which are 3D printed aluminum, and once the core is ready, that's also made from aluminum, it's time to assemble the pieces and integrate them into one item, by means of welding them. We'll be welding all around the core, and the weld is going to be located right here, on the lower part as well. Now in order to simplify the 3D printing process and reduce the amount of supports, the brackets were divided into less complex segments, which we're also going to be welding onto the final assembly.
Here you can see the factory intercooler, its design and its size. You've got plastic end tanks and a pretty modest looking core. That's what actually cools the air down. It gets bombarded by rocks to the point where a tube can even rupture. Our design addresses both of those issues. First of all, and I'd even go so far as to say that we're pioneering this solution, we're using protective corrugation, protective fins. The outer 3mm layer is made from a very hard metal that a rock won't damage and that you can't even bend with your finger. The core is very effective and the tanks ensure minimal loss of pressure. This unit, with how it's made, will provide maximum efficiency and reliability. The oversized intercooler fits under the bumper and goes into the stock mounting points. However, the frontal air duct and the rear extractor shroud don't fit anymore with how much bigger the core has gotten. We had to make them from scratch out of a vibration-resistant glass-filled polymer that hopefully can cope with cold temperature. They're a perfect fit, no need to hack anything on the car, though you will need the new parts. We're assembling the car and taking it to a dyno, where on the same day in similar conditions we'll compare the factory intercooler to ours in terms of efficiency. So on the dyno we're comparing our theoretical figures to actual testing data. On this graph, we can see that with the factory intercoolers, there's about a 10 degree difference in intake air temperature between the left and right banks. It's most likely due to a rock smashing into one of those intercoolers, while the front end of the car was being hit by rocks. With our intercoolers, we saw a stable temperature all across the board, though it did slightly increase by the end. Still, it stayed below 45 degrees Celsius even under extended engine load. We're not going to be going into how the intercooler took its final shape or how we calculated its efficiency, with that being a trade secret. What we will show you are some dyno numbers and performance figures that we recorded during actual road testing. Our intercoolers continue to work under serious load, while their factory counterparts seem to fall flat on their face as the engine load increases, losing almost all of their cooling capacity. That's why these cars are so lethargic when it's hot. After validating the theoretically attained data by means of actual testing, we can say that they almost perfectly overlap. We've made a product for these cars that will ensure intake air temperatures of about 47 degrees Celsius, or the stock intercoolers that figure is around 80. This allows for increasing the engine's longevity, ensuring safe everyday operation, and unlocking the potential for reliably modifying it. After extensive testing, we have the cooling aspect completely covered for Uruses, RSQ8s, and most likely Cayennes. For up to a thousand horsepower, this is all you need. Our next guinea pig is going to be a Panamera, which we'll literally have to shoehorn those intercoolers into. The intake air gets hot in that as well, and there is even less space to work with. We've scanned a Porsche Panamera in order to design a set of intercoolers, and on this image we can clearly see how tight the packaging is. The front air duct is really tiny. We don't want to remove that so we can't move forward, and there's no wiggle room behind it because of the wheel arch. That's all the space we have to work with. We'll do our best to fill up the empty space, and for that purpose we'll make a step-like core. We'll be printing the tanks, custom ordering the core, and not making any new ducting. We'll preserve all of the factory bits, the brackets, the mounting points, and everything else.
We make intercoolers for cars that you literally cannot find a decent and effective solution for on the market. The first one we made was for a 992 Turbo S. We've actually tried six different ones on that blue car. Five of those we sliced open and put away, because the cores were ineffective. All subsequent cars are being fitted with the finalized product, where all of the estimations have been fully confirmed and validated. The efficiency is on point with this one. Our approach towards the Urus, the Panamera and everything that came after, like the BMW M5 that we've decided to omit, was always the same maximum efficiency regardless of any complications. Shoehorning that which don't fit is what we're all about. So in essence, an intercooler is the grey eminence of any performance kit. It doesn't add any power or increase the performance on its own, but a colder intake charge and more consistent pressure do help increase power and reliability. Stock or not, a high horsepower car absolutely needs an intercooler that works properly. We are not the only ones engineering here. YouTube also dabbles in the same. Everyone who you saw before you found this video was asking you to like, hit the bell, subscribe and so on for one simple reason. Engagement directly affects how YouTube will recommend this video to people who've never seen, heard or known of us before. So if you're a fan of all things engineering but you don't necessarily like what I'm saying, write a comment. I'll respond personally and do my very best to improve. That way we'll have less dumb TikToks.